Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 14 of Blender Master Course Materials, Textures and Nodes Intermediate Level of Node Components In this chapter, we'll understand these topics that will make our understanding about node components better If you are new to this course then do watch the previous 14 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment So let's begin with it The first thing that we are going to do in this chapter is to explore different ways of adding color to our material But first let's add a shader editor here For this place your cursor here Right click and select horizontal split We'll drag this line and left click to finalize. Click on this icon here and select shader editor. Now this is the default material assigned to our object but we'll try something new this time. So click on this principal BSDF, press X to delete it and let's add a new one by pressing shift plus A, go to shader and let's select emission shader and we left click and place it here. Now to see the output, let's connect this emission to the surface. Let's go to the render view and what this emission shader does is that it will make your object emit light. That means if I select this light and press X to delete it, then we won't need any external light in our scene. But right now the render engine is set to EV by default. So let's go to the render properties and change the render engine to cycles. To see a better effect of this emission, go to the world properties by clicking on this globe here and by clicking on the color, we can change the color of our scene. To make it completely black, left click here and bring this slider down. Now you can see that our scene is completely black and there are no lights. But if I go to the camera view by pressing 0, our object is still visible and that's because it is emitting light with the use of emission shader. I can also change the color of this light from here. Suppose I select something like blue or green, then it will emit light of that specific color. But let's set it to white right now and it looks very simple so let's add some texture to it so with your cursor in the shader editor press shift plus a go to texture and let's select magic texture let's place it here now the magic texture has two connecting options the first one is color and the other one is fac which stands for factor this fac that is the factor one is basically for the values and to be more particular it's for the values that are between 0 and 1 there might be some exceptions but in most of the cases this factor value is for values between 0 to 1 we'll understand it later in this course but for now let's connect this color to the emission color now if you want to change the texture of the colors you can do this by using this distortion value for example if i set it to zero then the colors will disappear as it would mean that there is no distortion and no colors in your object but if i take it to something like three then it will add many colors to our object basically a higher distortion means more colors and a more complex texture assigned to your object and lesser distortion means that there are less colors and a lesser complex structure is assigned to your object but there's one problem with distortion at a value of one it generates this texture along with these colors but if i change the value to around two the texture along with the colors is changed but it might might be the case that you want the same texture but different colors in your object. But changing the distortion would mean changing both the texture and the color. So if I want this texture and some other colors in our object, we have to use another node component which is called the color ramp. For this, I'll press shift plus A, go to converter and select color ramp. Let's place it here. Let's move the magic texture and place the color ramp here. Until now, this node is not connected with any other node. Now this color ramp has a value of 0 to 1. So if I select this pointer here, here it shows the position value of 0. And if I select this pointer, then it shows a position value of 1. So the color ramp has a value from 0 to 1. Now I'll connect the factor of this magic texture to the factor of color ramp. And for the output, I'll take this color and connect it to the color of emission and now our object is black and white so the magic texture is creating this texture on this object and the color ramp will control which color should appear on this object the emission node will make your object emit light and the material output will help you to generate the output of this cube with the texture color and the emission now let's try to add some colors to this cube for this click on the first pointer then click on this black area and to view the colors drag this brightness slider upwards and now the colors are visible and let's change the color to blue and now you can see that there's some blue color on our object let's click on the second pointer click on this white area and let's change the second color so if i set it to red then you can see that our object has red and blue color that's because one of the colors selected is blue and the other one is red now suppose you want to add some more colors for this press on this plus icon here select this pointer and let's change the color from here so let's change it to green color. Now you can see that our object has blue color, green color and red color. Let's make this red color darker. So I'll click on this and drag this here. Now there are these three colors on our object. Suppose you want more red color on your object than the other two colors. For this left click on this pointer and drag it like this. And now you can see that the amount of red color has increased. Similarly, if you want more blue color, so left click on this blue pointer and drag it like this. Now the blue color has increased on the texture of our object. 
and this is how you can add various colors to your object which has a texture assigned to it and you can try different variations from here to give the texture of your object an exciting look and now that we have learned how to add colors to our material let's also understand about the textures like when to use which type of texture and what happens on applying some specific kind of textures even though there will be a separate complete chapter on textures alone but still let's try to understand the basics of adding texture or some pattern on our material or the object right now so i'll delete this color ramp by pressing x and let's also delete this magic texture and let's begin with the brick texture first so i'll press shift plus a in the shader editor go to texture and select brick texture let's place it here and right now you can see that our object doesn't have any kind of texture or any pattern applied to it it is only emitting light because of this emission node so to apply this brick texture to this cube we'll connect this color socket of the brick texture to the color socket of emission so press left click and let's connect it here and now you can see this brick texture on our cube we even discussed about the basics of this brick texture in our last chapter and we also observed that Although this brick texture is applied perfectly on the top, but it's not so perfect on the sides. And we even fixed it by using the UV maps in Blender. But in this chapter, let's understand when to use this brick texture in Blender. So if your object has a lot of squares or rectangles with some edges around them, then in most of the cases, it's good to use the brick texture for your object. For example, if you're creating a tile wall, then you can use this brick texture to create tiles on your faces. And to make all these faces uniform, we have to decrease the offset from here. At offset value of zero, all these faces will uniformly start from the same point and will end on the same point but if the offset is set to 0.5 then they look something like this they are basically starting from alternate points one is complete and the other one is not complete but let's undo it so that we get uniform faces and right now these tiles or the faces are rectangular in shape but if you want them to be squared shape then you have to change the width and height from here if both the brick width and the row height are equal then the faces will be squared shape so if i change the row height to 0.5 then all these faces will be squared shape now now suppose we want to rotate this texture in a particular angle like for example 45 degrees for this we need to add another node here and it's the mapping node so i'll press shift plus a go to vector and select mapping let's place it here and let's zoom out for a better view and if i connect this vector to the vector of brick texture then my object will turn black and that's because we have not added any input node here so to add an input node press shift plus a in the shader editor select input and we'll add texture coordinate let's place it here and we'll connect the default generated socket with the vector socket here so i'll left click here and connect it to the vector and now you can see that the texture is visible so to rotate this texture by a specific angle we need to change the rotation values here suppose i want to change the rotation by 45 degrees then i'll go to this z axis rotation and type 45 and press enter and you can now see that the texture is rotated by 45 degrees in the z axis now suppose you want to change the thickness of these edges here for this you need to change the value of motor size right now it's set to 0.02 suppose i increase it and set to 0.1 then you can see that the edges are thick now and if you want to make them smooth then you can change this motor smooth value right now it's set at 0.1 but if i increase it to something like 0.5 then you can see that the smoothness has increased and suppose you want to remove all the edges completely for this you need to decrease the motor size to exact zero and now you can see that the edges have completely disappeared from a texture so that's how you use the brick texture on your object now let's try another texture that is the Voronoi texture for this first select these three press x to delete them and we'll add the Voronoi texture by pressing shift plus a going to texture and select Voronoi texture let's add it here and to connect this node with the emission node left click on the color socket and connect it to the color socket of the emission and now you can see that that it generates this colorful geometric pattern type of texture on our object and you can use these parameters to edit your texture so suppose you want more of these shapes on your texture for this you can increase this scale value right now it's 5 but if you increase it to something like 20 then the texture changes to something like this and you may also notice that the shape of all these patterns is very random like all of them are of the different shapes and that's because the randomness value here is set to 1 but if i change this value to 0 then you can see that all of them have the same size and all are square shaped now that's because their randomness has been reduced to zero one more thing to note here is that right now we are not exploring each texture in detail there will be a separate chapter where we will discuss everything about the textures and we'll explore the common textures that we use but right now we are just trying to see how do you add different patterns to your material and so basically by using different types of textures and adjusting the parameters from here you can add different types of patterns to your material and now that we have learned about the basics of adding patterns or basically texture to our object so now it's the time to look 
look at the structure of our material or in simpler words we'll try to create some 3d effects on our material and in blender we can do that by creating bumps on our object by creating bumps on our object it will give our texture a 3d appearance and to do this first i'll save this file and i'll close this file and create a new blender file so that we can start from the beginning so here i've created a new blender file and we'll add a shader editor to the top for this let's place our cursor here right click and select horizontal split now we'll drag this line here and press left mouse button now click on this icon and select shader editor now we have the shader editor at the top and the 3d viewport editor at the bottom now giving a texture to your object basically means creating fake heights and bumps and that too without changing the geometry of the object and we'll practically understand it by using a height map here but first let's go to the render view now we need to add some texture to object first so i'll press shift plus a go to texture and let's add the noise texture so i selected this and let's place it here now before connecting them together there is one more thing to change that is we need to change the render engine to cycles so go to the render properties and change the render engine from ev to cycles and now let's connect this color socket to the base color and this texture appears on our object but as you can see here that this entire texture or this pattern is completely flat on the surface and to give it a 3d effect or basically to create bumps on it we need to add a bump node here for this press shift plus a go to vector and select bump let's place it here now to connect this node we have to connect this purple colored normal socket with the normal socket of the principal bstf so let's connect them together and to connect the texture with it we'll take this factor socket and let's connect it to the height and now you can see that it has created some sort of bumps on our object however if you notice closely especially at the edges then these bumps are very flat they don't look that realistic and this can be fixed by changing the parameters of this noise texture so if i try to increase the scale like this then you will observe that this texture looks a little better similarly if i increase the detail then it looks way too much realistic than before and to see some more changes let's try to change this distortion value here currently it's set to 0 but if I increase it to 1 then our object appears like this so basically by changing the scale detail and distortion you can give your texture a better look so you can try experimenting with these values and see which one looks the best according to you now to change the strength and the color of these bumps you have to change these parameters in the bump node so suppose I decrease the distance from here and set it to 0 then the object won't show any bumps or any 3d effect that is because the distance is set to 0 but if I slightly increase it to something like 0.1 then you will notice slight bumps on your object and higher the distance more will be the bump size and you can even control the intensity of this black color of your bumps for this you have to change this strength value from here so now I have decreased it and now you can see that the black color has reduced so higher the strength more will be the black color of your bump and if you lower it then the black color will reduce right now let's set it to 1 and so that's how you add bumps or basically give a 3d look to your objects material and you can even change the roughness of your texture from this roughness parameter of your noise texture currently by default it's set to 0 0.5 but if I reduce it to 0 then you can see that all the roughness is gone and the texture has a very smooth appearance and also remember that lower the roughness higher will be the reflection on your surface which means that at zero roughness your object surface will have maximum reflection but suppose if I set the roughness to 1 then you can see that the roughness of this texture has significantly increased but for creating realistic renders in most of the cases you will be setting the roughness to somewhere around 0.5 only because at roughness of 0.5 you can see that the texture has a very realistic look on the object now to revise all the concepts that we have covered till now and also to understand some more concepts of texturing let's try to make this simple looking brick wall texture in blender for this let's first delete this cube by pressing x1 keyboard and let's add a new cube in our scene to add a material to it click on the new material button here now to add a brick texture to this cube go to the shader editor and press shift plus a now in the texture we have to select the brick texture let's place it here and if i connect the color socket with the base color of the principal bstf you can see that this brick texture is generated here but it's black and white in color currently we'll be working on the texture on the top face of the cube only so let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad let's zoom in and suppose you want to change the color of these bricks or these faces and the edges in between them for this let's understand about a new node which is the mix color node to add it here i will press shift plus a go to color and select mix color let's place it here now this will allow you to change the color of these faces and the edges in between so i'll connect the factor socket of brick texture with the factor socket of the mix color node and to generate the output that is the color i'll connect this result with the base color socket of the principal bstf but right now you will see nothing because because we have to change the colors from here so let's select this color a and change the color to red so basically the color a represents these brick faces and the color b represents the edges in between them let's try to change the color of these edges also 
So I'll go to color B and let's make them dark green color. So I'll bring this brightness slider down like this so that it looks realistic. Now this was one way of doing this but there's another way which is more often used by people and that is to use the mix shader. This one was the mix color node and the one that we are going to use right now is the mix shader. So with this selected press X to delete it and by pressing shift plus A we'll go to shader and let's add the mix shader. Let's place it here. Now what I'm going to do is that I'll take this material output and let's shift it here. Now we'll direct connect this mix shader with the output so click on this shader socket and connect it to the surface to see the changes here we have to connect this bsvf socket with the first shader socket here now to see the texture on a surface we have to connect this brick texture with this mix shader for this select this factor socket and connect it to the factor socket of the mix shader now you can see that the texture has appeared here and to change the color of this brick faces you have to click on the base color here and let's change it to red color and this is how it looks now now suppose you also want to change the color of these edges here for this we have to create a duplicate of this principal bsdf and connect it to the mix shader so left click to select this principal bsdf and to duplicate it we have to press shift plus b let's place it down here and to connect both of them we have to connect the bsdf with the shader socket number two the first shader socket is connected to this one and the second one is connected to this let's click on the base color first change the color to white and to turn it into gray we have to bring down this brightness slider like this so let's try to understand this in a better way we added a texture here that is the brick texture and connected it to the mix shader then we needed colors on our texture so we added these two principal bsdf and also connected them to the mix shader and for the output we use this material output node now if you look closely then it looks very simple and that's because we have not added any 3d effects like bumps to our object so let's try to do that first let's place it here let's bring it here and this one also now this one is for the red colored bricks and this one is for the edges now to create bumps on it we have to press shift plus a go to vector and add bump let's place it here and we'll connect its normal to the normal of this principal bsdf and let's also try to add a wave texture so that it looks much more realistic so i'll press shift plus a go to texture and let's add this wave texture let's see what kind of impact it creates i'll connect the factor of this wave texture to the height to connect them together now you can see that some straight lines have appeared on our object and i can control them from the parameters here for example currently its scale value is 5 but if i increase it like this then the number of lines are also increasing also they look very straight but in real life the textures are not so perfect and for this you have this distortion parameter so let's try to change it we'll increase it and you can now see that they are no longer straight and to make it look a bit more realistic we can increase this detail from here currently it's at 2 but let's set it around 8 so that it could give it a much realistic look than before now let's revise what all we have done here till now first we needed to add a brick texture so i added this brick texture and connected it to the mix shader i used the mix shader because i needed two different colors on this texture one was the red color and the other one was the gray color for the edges then to make the brick faces look more realistic i added this wave texture with this bump and connected it to this one because it was controlling the material of our brick face that is the red color similarly if i have to create some 3d effects on the edges then i have to do this using this principal bsdf because it is giving the material of this dark gray color to the edges so now suppose you want to add some noise texture to your edges and to create a bump effect on these edges for this press shift plus a go to vector and add bump let's place it here and connect the normal to the normal of the bsdf let's also add the noise texture by pressing shift plus a go to texture and add noise texture let's place it here now connect the factor socket to the height socket of the bump and now it looks like this but you can see here that the edges look very smooth or basically very shiny which makes it look unreal to fix this we need to add some detail currently the detail parameter is set to 2 and it can go to max maximum of 15 so let's increase it to the maximum and now you can see that it looks way too much better than before it has added some detail and roughness to it which makes it look realistic so that's all in this chapter and yes if you have not understood how different textures work then you need not worry because in the upcoming chapters we are going to explore all the important textures in complete detail currently we are only understanding how these node components are connected with each other and what change can you expect by either connecting them or by changing these parameters so our next chapter is gonna be the chapter number 15 which will be the advanced level of node components in blender so if you are new to this channel then do subscribe smash that like button and press the notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one